Hey, hello there folks, it's me RJB from RJB TV, and I decided that it's about time that we dive into the past, into what I believe is a set of games from probably, arguably, the prime time of Fastest Map 1 vs. 1, back when a lot of professional players were giving 1 vs. 1 a lot of time on Fastest Map to actually be and become very, very good at it. And the player we're going to be looking at today is the player Mong, a professional Terran player, has had a lot of moderate success in professional tournaments in the top uh, 20, the top 30, uh, 28, top 12, even sometimes. Just a very good all-round Terran player. And then we have Gensa here on the Protoss, one of the best fastest map players in the history of fastest map. He pretty much stood right next to Brain for like five, maybe six years at the top. Nobody could touch these two players, Gensei and Brain. They were standing there next to each other. He's here in the Protoss, very, very good player. So yeah, I might have cast this replay once before, like three years ago or even four years ago, but that was so long ago that I think it doesn't hurt to maybe recast some games. I'm not sure if I have because it is a lot of effort to dig into all the replays from long ago to see whether I have or have not cast some games. So I've decided to just do it. I don't think I've cast this though. I don't think I've cast this specifically because I have only like, I only have like two sets between Mong and Gensei on the channel, specifically. So yeah, there's not a lot of sets between these two players that I've cast, so I think we're pretty safe in saying that this has not been seen before. At least so I hope. At least so I hope. So we have Mong here going across the map with a scout after. He kind of scouts kind of early. Like he scouts a little bit faster than people usually do. Probably because he's planning on going for a marine rush with some SCVs. And he wants to find his opponent very early. And with the micro that Mong has, you better be fearing the opportunity or the possibility. That's the right word. The possibility of him rushing you with marines and an SCV. And he arrives in Gente's choke before Gente has a cannon up and running. And that is something to be worried about. He builds two cannons just to be sure that if one goes down, maybe the other one can warp in on time. He pulls his pro back to relocate and scout another location. But you got the SV and the Marine arriving in the front door there to break through that cannon there in the front. Whereas Gensei is on a forge first. Like he goes Nexus Forge Gateway Choke. So he has nothing to fight back with. He's pulling probes because the probes are the only line of defense to keep those cannons alive. Cannon in the front there is not going to die. It looks like Mong pulled his own SVs a little bit too late. Pulled his own SVs a little bit too late. Killed one cannon. Maybe it got cancelled. He pulled those SCVs up to maybe get on top of cannon number two and have the Marines kill the cannon number two, but not working out for him this time around. So we have a little bit of economic slowdown for both players. We have Mong stopping Marine production to get that command center up and running because there's nothing that Gensei can do to counterattack him at the moment. He has Marines in the front, there's one Zealot, nothing he can do to go for the attack because he cannot get attacked. He, of course, goes for that command center and he gets a gas. So he's not going to go for triple command center, he's going to go for double command center. Because otherwise, he wouldn't be getting the gas this early. If he. Oh, wait, 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 what's this? He just walked right in there with his marines. What the hell? Oh, the micro is so good, but the probe's coming in to save the day and they will turn the tides. Like, there's only so much micro you can do with marines when you're getting attacked by probes and zealots. He's trying his best. He gets one more probe kill. I think he got one probe kill, got one Zelda kill. Things are looking pretty good there for Maw. Got some damage done. Lost only a couple more Marines. He doesn't care about the Marines. I just find it interesting that he just walked right in there. Like right before cannon number two finished up, he just walked right in there. He's gonna keep that Marine um, from dying by just having it run in circles over and over and over and get a lot of valid information. The only way Gens is gonna kill that one is if he builds a cannon. Mong walls into the cannon, or he builds a Dragoon and he kills it with the Dragoon. The Dragoon is on the way. He's spinning the Cyber Core. He's probably planning on making Mong think he's going to build a lot more Dragoons, and I'm wrong. He's not trying to mind game. He's actually going for more Dragoons. Like, I was thinking, like, maybe he's making the Cyber Core spin 
to make Maul prepare for Dragoons and he's gonna cancel the Cyber, uh, the Singularity Charge. Dragoon range. And then Maul will have prepared defenses for Dragoons for no fucking reason. Because there's no Dragoons coming. He builds Triple Robo, gets a couple more cannons up in the front. We have Engineering Bay and Factory on the way there for Maul. Stim is on the way, he's building a bunker in the front. He might get a range right afterwards, or he might go for a level 1 attack. Not too sure, there's a lot of options on the table. Gets that machine shop as well. Whereas, yeah, we have more Dragoons on the way there for Gensei. With Gensei, you never really know what he's going to do. He always has a couple of interesting build orders up his sleeve that are always going to be throwing you off with some unexpected things happening. Now, Mong might try to stim his way through that choke point, but there's four cannons. He's not going to commit it. It's like the moment he sees his four cannons and some dragoons, he's going to pull back and call the day. He's going to retreat and say, nope, he's going to try. He sees the front and he immediately turns around. He saw the army, doesn't fall for it, doesn't commit to it, doesn't lose the marines, lost one of them. Very healthy exchange. A lot of dragoons are in the front though from Gensei. And we got Shuttle and Double Reaver on the way. It's kind of interesting how he's able to spend this much money this consistently so early into the game. I've never seen a player have this much army and tech progression happening at the same time. It's a very rare thing to see, but Gensei somehow with perfect pro production and very good optimization with his gas, his minerals, is making it work. Goes for the attack, tries to kill a Dragoon. He's trying, he's dancing back and forth here. Something only pro players can do, but here he comes the shell with the Reaver inside. He's arriving on the scene. There's a fight happening there at the front. Marines do go down. He's trying to kill those Dragoons as much as he can. Now, luckily for him, there was no Reavers inside the shuttle, only Zealots. So, a small little lucky break there for Maul. No Reavers, only Zealots. Menix make the way back home. He's got a small little wall on the front. He's gonna build another supply depot there to make sure that the Dragoons cannot walk into the base. The tank is spaced pretty far back. So the goons cannot go for the attack. Like, if they come close, they cannot hit the tank, but the tank can hit them, which means they can only hit the supply depots, which is there to slow them down. So they would just die. So he pulls them back. Shuttle flying over the bottom. We got shuttle speed there. Almost finished up. Almost finished up. Zettle speed on the way. Level 1 attack. And we got Fortune number 2 and a Tempest Archive. We got a lot of star... Well, one starboard. One star gate. More gateways. He builds all of his gateways closer to the Robos. Something interesting that you might want to do in your own play. This makes producing in the front a little bit easier to do. So tank number two, they're in the front. We've got some turrets are coming up on the sides. We have rates in the sky to snipe the shuttles. We have marines waiting for the shuttles to fly in. And the barracks flying into the sky to give vision on that high ground. Shuttle turns back around and goes back home. He didn't want to commit to a bad flight path. He had some turrets in between. Get Reavers inside, and of course he knows that if there's turrets on the bottom, Mong will respond to it and snipe it. He's changing his mind. He's changing his mind just a little bit. This one might try to go in to tr maybe scout the base, but there's a lot of turrets there. This will go down before it gets any useful information. So not all of useful information found there with the Corsair. It's something Gensei sometimes does. He flies a Corsair in and just scouts the base with the Corsair because the Corsair is really not that important. That's course number two. More shuttles on the way. But more Reavers as well. He's going to go for a big mass drop while going for a big economy as fast as he can. He's on 64 probes. He hasn't missed a single beat in his probe production. And he's sending them pretty much instantly, which is kind of impressive to do. Have one armor on the way, storm on the way. Like, he's already sent those two that he just made. His multitasking is really insane to me. Same with Mong. In the same multitasking. They're, they're spending their minerals so extremely quickly while doing everything else at the same time. Comes over the front, unloads on the front door, Reavers behind the wall. Goes in, he's gonna kill everything. He's gonna kill everything here. He's just gonna kill everything here in the front. Ooh, huge hit there on a Marine. Reaver flies away, gets taken down there though, so one Reaver drops. Gets killed anyway after it unloads. And somehow, somehow, the bunkers in the front keep Mong alive. Because Mong is very good at one thing that I haven't seen anyone else do as well as he does. He is very good at loading his bunkers, stimming the marines and putting them right back in within a single second. Like every single bunker, four bunkers, unloads, stims, puts them back in. Why? Because stim marines and bunkers do stim damage. So that's a lot of damage on marines that don't take any damage from your attack. So that, like, stim marines and bunkers, absolutely underrated method of defense. Not a lot of players do it, 
because it takes a lot of actions to do. But not a lot of players do it, but Mong being a professional player, it's easy for him. It's, it, it's a piece of cake. So he managed to survive a very big attack on the front, taking minimal amounts of damage. Build new bunkers, gonna build some more turrets on the sides. He's got triple factory now, he's got double starport. No facility yet, but he's building the facility right about now to give himself access. Wait, that's a starport. There's no facility anywhere yet. So he's gonna delay his upgrade quite a little bit. Although you could say that he's not getting level two attack. Usually I see him get level 2 attack, big drop on the top there. Uh, attack upgrades on the way for his tanks, armor as well. Barracks finds the sh shuttles, raids are coming in, snipes 1, shuttle snipes 2, snipes 3. Perfect micro and no temple unloads. Very easy, easy, easy defense. Like having really good wraith control and accuracy with the mouse just allows you to so easily take down those shuttle drops. Within a matter of seconds, like, this is prime time gaming. During barely the bottom to get a vision on the high ground, we got some cannons on the middle, not a lot, just a few. And yeah, Gensi is just spending and attacking really well, but Maul is just swatting down his attacks without much effort. I mean, it looks like it's easy for him, but it isn't. It, this is really... I'm saying without much effort, but the amount of effort and skill it takes to do this is... Pretty much unheard of in all of Fast's map. There's only a very few players who can make it look this easy, which it's not, but they can make it look easy. And Mong is definitely one of them, specifically against a player like Gensei, who we've seen take many Terran players down under 10 minutes, making it look stupidly easy. This is a big drop. This is a really big drop. A lot of shuttles. Like, we have seven shuttles. I go for two more for a total of nine. He's gonna load up everything he can into the shuttles and just fly right into the enemy base. And maybe a load on top of the command center, maybe a load on the top corner, maybe a load on the front. I'm not sure where he's gonna go. Like, he's got a lot of options. At least five. Bottom corner, front, top corner, or the backside. Or maybe in the middle. Who knows? I don't know what he's gonna do. We have an hallucinator drop. That one is gonna try to distract, but he sees this drop first, because this one flies over the front, and he goes for the hallucinator drop, which means the real drop flies over the bottom side. He's stimming to the backside, he's stimming to the bunkers. Unloading on the scene as a lot of Archons, a lot of Zealots on the scene. SCVs will die. Command Center is getting absolutely destroyed within a matter of seconds. It's still alive there though, but there it goes, it goes down. And the SCVs will go down to the Archons and maybe the Zealots as well. So the Zealots are just absolutely destroying everything they can. Tanks are rolling into the backside. And Gensei, with a very good but simple setup, managed to trick Mong into making a big mistake. He attacked the hallucinated shuttles exactly as planned. And the real one just got in over the front side. Sometimes it's all you gotta do. Just fly in over the front while something else distracts the race. It worked like a charm. It worked like a charm. So now we got cannons coming up on the side, we got Arbiter on the way there back at home, we got just more gateway units being built, more shuttles being warped in. We have an Archon, a Dark Archon, with of course mind control researching at the moment. His upgrades are also in a very good place. He's got triple force, he's on 1-1-2, one, one, looking strong. Mong is on 1-1, one, one. got 2-2 two, two on the way, he's got four armories, a lot of SVs are on the top corner being put back to work, and somehow surprisingly the Archons did not kill that many SCVs, even though they had the chance to, he was just focusing on the command center instead. There's a small little oversight there from Gensei, but everything is working out just fine for him. Now we got a big frontal attack, he's probably gonna unload there behind the bunker line. He's going for it, going straight for it. Dropships have stuff in them, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, so he tries to unload behind the enemy lines, but the Raids, the Valkyries take everything down quite easily. Tank still alive, it's not gonna get taken down. So small little nice looking break. Now Mong is gonna go for the counterattack, knowing that he has one chance to make this work. He puts those tanks on the high ground there, right in front of Gensei's base. Got a drop flying out over the bottom side of the map, probably gonna build a proxy gateway base somewhere on the map. His cannons everywhere around, he's 
taking down a proxy gateway base with the raids. Tanks of the high gods got stormed to death, but three are still alive. I'm not sure what is what's in here. Let me just see what's in here. Real quick. The Dark Archon. What else? What else? Probably gonna try to mind control something here on the bottom side. Winds that are flying in the sky. Drops his return back home. Tank is still being a bitch. The Valkyries are stopping shuttles from unloading on top of the tanks, so that's very, very annoying. He's building some carriers to try and take care of that. Not a bad choice, not a bad choice. I think Storms would do a better job here though. But yeah, he's, he's getting carriers and Corsairs. Corsairs probably to push the Valkyries away from the high ground and the carriers can kill the tanks on that high ground. A lot of group of dropships flying across. Gonna get, ooh, ooh, that was so close to dying. <laughs> so close to dying. He's throwing away Marines, opening up supply space. Gets tank up on that high ground there inside of Gensei's choke. Shuttle's flying over the bottom side while the Valkyries are distracted. He's gonna clear out those tanks. Gonna clear them out. Gonna try again with more raids coming across the map to take down those zealots who maybe salvage the situation and get the tanks on the high ground up and running once again. Still sitting there on the bottom side of the map. He's not... Like, he's not making a lot of progress in doing significant damage. What matters more is that he is keeping Gensei very occupied. Gensei is not dropping. Mong is recovering. Mong is attacking. Mong has taken the lead in the sense that he is not ahead of Gensei, but he's deciding what happens next. He is deciding what happens next. With some very good dropship play. Moves out yet again. Almost on a Unloads. Gonna take this down once and for all. Just make sure that this is not gonna be a thorn in his side later on in the game. Zealots coming up there to maybe clean that out. Got carriers in the sky there. He threw away a lot of zealots to open up more supply space for more carriers. We've got three finished up at the moment and three more on the way. Maybe he tried to drop. He tried to. No, that's still the same shield from earlier. Nothing happened there back at home. We're just moving out there to kill the raids. There's no observer on the scene, so the Valkyries are gonna have to do the job. And the Valkyries die pretty quickly. And the Corsairs do die eventually. The two cores, two Valkyries alive with like 40 HP. A lot of drop there coming in. Over. He's flying in. He tried to avoid the Corsairs. So he tried to unload maybe somewhere around here. He scanned ahead to see what's happening here inside of that base. He flies into the base, unloading on top of the cannons. Goes in deeper, goes in deeper. Gets those tanks situated. He's gonna kill some probes. Gets, ooh, gets about 30 probes. But the drop goes down to the carriers, not exactly what he had hoped for. And enough probes stay alive there for Gensei. You don't have to worry about income at all because he's got carriers. And carriers are super, super efficient. It's only six though, only six carriers. Arbiter's on the way, couple more courses in production, uh, Wraiths and Valkyries waiting to strike on the carriers, but the carriers are staying behind cannon lines, so they're out of harm's way. The tanks cleaning out this entire top 12 o'clock section of the map, they're using the fly back and forth. Probe is still alive, he didn't kill the probe, he didn't kill the probe, so the probe is still a problem there, he can still rebuild this. Courses once again moving out, hunting for the Wraiths and the Valkyries, which are currently on 2-2 two, two upgrades against 2-2 two, two upgrades there from the air army that Gensei has. So we have an air army against air army fight. Corsairs are losing the fight pretty badly. More dropships coming across the map because the carriers are still fighting back. Both players are kind of low on money for different reasons. For different reasons. Set the tanks there. Gonna kill the cannon. Gonna set up on the high ground as well. Oh. Oh. Oh, I was not paying attention. I was not paying attention. Oh my god. I was so focused on that 12 o'clock fight that I completely missed the obvious fact that this was not a cannon base. I thought this was all cannons because everything is cannons everywhere. Like, everywhere we get cannons. But this was a proxy reaver base, a dropping base, and guess what he was doing up here? I completely missed this. This was so caught up with all this happening. I was so caught up. That, that's one of my... I just didn't notice. I just didn't notice. So he's building a Reaver 
drop from his proxy base. Very sneaky stuff. Mong didn't see this happening. I did not see this happening. I should have seen it, but I didn't. But while I was distracted with this happening here on the top corner of the map, Gensei was preparing a surgically precise death blow. Reavers in shuttles, protected by Corsairs, to fly in over the bottom side with very little protection. The Valkyries were very aggressively, very aggressively posturing on the other side of the map. Looks like Mong did unload some tanks on the low ground to take this down, so he knew that something was happening. He just didn't know a drop was coming in right now. He just didn't notice, like he was fighting over here against Valkyries and Wraiths, and a drop comes in at the same time, arrives on location, flies in, and unloads the Reavers right on top of those poor SUVs and takes them all down within the blink of an eye. Look at them just dying so quick, and Mong's game at this point is just gone. It's over. Not a chance to make a comeback. It's completely, absolutely destroyed economically. Mong played well. He played well. But Gensei manages to end the game with two attacks that actually managed to do something. There were both mass drops on his main. Everything else didn't work. The two drops did Mong in. Not the mass attacks on the front. Drops. Very simple, big drops. But one of those two drops was kind of one of trickery. But in the end, Gensei wins game number one, which means we're going to game number two between Mong and Gensei. Game number one, honestly, was a very technical game. It was more so that both players were playing basically peak level macro, micro, and multitasking. And they didn't leave a lot of openings. But the few openings that they did give to their opponent were immediately utilized to do great amounts of damage. Let me just slow this down. I accidentally sped it up. Oh, my leg is sleeping. Oh, I gotta get a different chair. My leg is sleeping. Oh. Oh. So, let me just reintroduce what we're looking at. We've got Mong on the Terran. 9 o'clock spawn location. We have Gensei on the name Barcode. You're on the bottom middle of the map on a 6 o'clock spawn location. Going for a Nexus first on the middle spawn, and I think that might turn out to be a problem for him. I think he's gonna feel this one. Also, let me just switch the sweet the scene back. <laughs> Ooh. Imagine if I forgot to switch the scene back. That would have been terrible. That would have been terrible. So we missed the first minute, but nothing important was missed. Gensei, six o'clock, long, nine o'clock. Goes for an eight barracks, nine supply depot. Very early SFV scout scouting chokes. He's only scouting the chokes and it's gonna work out in his favor this time around. So yeah, Gensei went for Nexus first into a pylon, well, all the way around. Pylon, Nexus, Forge, pylon in a choke. Two cannons in the front, and then a gateway. He's actually getting his gateway very late. Usually, we get a gateway before the two cannons. This time around, he knows that his opponent is rushing him. He scouted him very early. He knows he is under the threat of getting attacked, so he's kind of very early going for a defensive move. A very, very defensive move. Reading as if he arrived on the scene. We probes are under attack. Cannon finishes up. Probe makes its way in. Uh, SV makes its way in, and so does the Marine. And the probes both die, and the Marine stays alive with a small little micro step to make sure that it doesn't die. Like, very little HP. That one micro step kept it alive. That one little micro step kept it alive. This probe there, though, coming in is going to kill it for sure. It's going to kill it for sure. Maybe it's going to block it with some really good micro. Some really good... Oh! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's some good micro. Oh, is he going to do it again? Is he good? Oh, almost did it again. Almost did it again. In the end, the marine dies. Two guys in the front. Okay, we in the back. Double gas, double nexus. 18 probes, 18 SCVs, Cybercore on the way, and Mong is going for a very fast stim. He's not going for a command center, he's going for a factory. Mong is going to go for a early killing blow attempt. Usually, Terran players get a command center right after they scout this, but Mong is going for academy, no command center, very fast factory to maybe go for a tank push. 
He's getting early stim, getting early medics. He is... He's out for blood. He wants revenge for last game. He felt like he got done dirty. So now he wants to return to favor and do Gensei dirty. So moving out in front, Stim is on the way. Got a Siddle of Doom there being built there for Gensei, getting two more gateways. He did not build a robotics. Two more gateways there being built on the side. He wants to go for a counter attack on Mong. In the case Mong decides to Stim through that choke point. But little does he know that Mong is ahead of schedule. His stim is faster than usual. His marines are in greater number than usual. Firebats arriving on the scene, and this might just catch Gensei off guard. There's three zealots. Three more on the way in the back. The firebats have arrived, and he's stimming right now. He's ready to go. Stims forward. He's gonna. The firebats should be in the front, but the firebats arrive a little bit late. But the firebats arrive still on time. They should have just been in the front. So the firebats are in the front, tanking damage, absolutely melting faces. Zealots getting destroyed, Marines arriving on the scene, and this might just... It's the game. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the game. G Gansai just leaves. He's like, ah, no, not again. Not again. Yes, it happened again, Gensei. You got murked by a simple stim firebat attack with some medics on your choke, and you were caught unprepared. And you, you paid the price for it as well. You paid the price for it as well. Yeah, a game not even five minutes long, just pure, unexpected execution by a slightly altered timing attack. Usually, it's command center before the academy, Another this time around, academy and factory. No command center, just all in aggression. Which means that Mong had to kill him right there, or do some real big damage. Or you would probably die as the game goes on, being down too many SCVs to stay alive on. So here we got game number three. Between Gensei and Mong. Mong has become a Protoss player. We have a small little race swap happening, and Gensei is on the Olive Green Terran. I really like watching Gensei play Terran. Why? Because he is bat shit insane. He tries to pull off some really crazy hyper aggressive moves. And I like that. Sometimes it feels like he's being too arrogant with his hyper aggressive moves, like he knows the chances are low, like very low. But he just like gambles on it. Either because he believes his micro and multitasking is so extremely good that he can pull it off, or because he's just a gambling man, or because he's insane. Those are basically the three options. So Mong going for Nexus first as well on middle spawn, something that I think is quite risky to do, because as we saw in the last game, if you go for Nexus first on the middle spawn, you have to use your probes to defend your choke, and that might cost you some minerals. You might lose some probes, you might either lose a cannon and some probes, or you might lose your entire choke and lose the game. But Nexus first carries some risks on the middle spawn location. Luckily for Mong, I think Gensei is on a location that's pretty far removed and unlikely to find Mong on time. It really depends on where he's going to send that SCV. He's going to send it across map. Is he going to find that pro? No. Oh, he goes the right direction. He goes the exact correct direction. He goes to the middle, goes to the left, and by pure chance, finds him on the very first attempt. This might be a little bit troublesome for Mong. It might not be, but I think and predict that it will be. So. Mong is scouting the entire middle, looking for a marine to enter his vision. He wants to intercept the marine, because he knows the marine is on the way. He knows. He just knows. He's looking for it. Can't find it. It's right here, right below you. He misses it. He misses the S. He misses the. He missed the marine. I think he missed the marine. So he arrives on the scene. Probes being pulled. He's in his, okay. He's gonna go for a scout now. Got four probes pulled. Gets us around on the marine. Marine goes down. And that pretty much shuts down the attack, because the first Marine and SCV have to both be damaging the cannon. And if that's not happening, you're not going to break through. So he, he aborts mission, and unlike Mong, he built a command center first. After scouting, does not get a gas or an academy, 
which also means that because Mong saw this, Mong knows he's not going to get attacked anytime soon. He is safe and sound for now, so he can safely build up bigger without having to worry about, you know, getting his choke broken. Like Gensei suffered last game. So he's safe, he's safe for now. Double gas on the way, Sabicor there, warping in. Got a double gas coming in there for Gensei. He went for triple command center. So he really wants to take this easy. He's really looking for a longer game. Like there's literally no way if you go for a plus two command center, you can realistically break through a choke with your units. It's just not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. So this gives Mong even more safety. He's got the robotics coming up in there in the front. Gas number three in the back. I personally feel like triple gas is a lot of gas this early on. But I do see a lot of Protoss players do this from time to time. Not always, usually it is two gas, and they get their third gas at like five minutes, maybe six minutes. But sometimes I see them do triple gas because they want to get a lot more gas technology going than they otherwise would like to. Like it's only a double gateway, not a triple gateway. Triple gateway means more zealots. Double gateway means of course less zealots. It's pretty obvious. Citadel of Dune coming up in the back. He might go for Dark Templars, not too sure. He's keeping that rope on a spot where I think it's going to be a support bay and then a Templars Archive. He has the gas for it. Really not sure what he's going to do. There's Gensei is getting scans, getting a factory, getting engineering bay. Marines being kept in the front, very far in the front. Two Marines are on the sides, patrolling back and forth to maybe see a shuttle fly in. Maybe see a shuttle fly in. We have... Observatory? What? Huh? An observatory? That's an interesting one. This is starting to look a lot more like a professional normal map game. Where Protoss players have to get an observatory because the Terran usually goes for fast vultures with mines. And then there's mines on the map. In which case, you do need an observer. Maybe that's why. Got a Temple Sarkov on the way as well. It's got Shuttle Speed there being upgraded, researched. Little Reaver there almost finishing up. Marine standing on the top side. He is probably predicting and expecting Gensei or Mong flying over the top with the shuttle. But he went over the bottom side. Tried to get some cells into the enemy base. Not happening. Marines are stimming down. He's flying right into the Marines. He's going to take down that shuttle. Ooh, that's a painful one. That's going to slow down Mong's drops quite a bit. He tried to get some Zealots into enemy base. Uh, Gensei had a great warning system with Marines on the map. Shut it down. Took down the shuttle. Now he has to wait for two more shuttles. He could have been flying across the map right now with two Reavers ready to kill whatever they want to. It didn't happen. Gensei with very good position on the top because a lot of players go for f like a lot of players when they have these spawn locations they fly right forward into the middle right across this point drop from the top the other option is they fly right on this path to the bottom side they never fly all the way around it's always straight lines to either here or here that's why he's put his marines right in between the path to maybe try and intercept that that explains why Gensei had his units where he put them. Where he put them. Of course, Mong trying to clean out those sides. Marine there still walking back and forth, patrolling. Two tanks in the front, no turret. We got very few units inside of Gensei's base. He got his triple factory very fast, and his fourth and fifth barrack very late. Also, we don't see starboards. I think Gensei might be planning to go for a, I'd say 10, maybe 12 minute counter attack. He scanned the map to see what's happening there. Scanned the entire base, got some pretty good information out there. We already have a Stargate there, we got the drop coming over the top side, Marine stimming in. He turns around, unlulls, Reaver's gonna shoot all his Marines, Marines running away, we got, ooh, that's a lot of dead Marines. That was a very good choice there by Mong. Mong made a very good choice there. Holding back, letting the Marines 
go towards the Reavers so that the Reavers can kill as much as they can. He's killing so many Marines. This is really, really good. But he didn't kill any SCVs. Nope, we're still on the scene. Picks it up, flies deeper into the backside. It's still there, it's still there. Waiting for its moment to strike. And it never found its moment to strike. It just got taken down. So now we have a drop there with some High Templars. Well, one High Templar. The results flies in over a hole does not get spotted. Marines are moving. He's unloading. Templar does not unload though. It's only Zealots. Ooh, he unloaded all the Zealots except the High Templar. Just a little bit too slow with the unload. And Gense once again gets cut some slack. No damage taken. Just Marines dead left and right. No SCVs dead, which is great because he's on Tropical Command Center. Already on 70 SCVs. Well, on the magical 69 at the moment. But it will very soon be on 70. Same for Mong on 69. Ooh, it's such a nice little look. 69, 69. So we have another couple more gas coming up there for Mong. He's going for 8 total. Yeah, he's very good with upgrades. Like, I always find Mong to be very good with his spending. It's a professional player thing. Very good spending. Very good tech progression. All at the same time. Up at the bottom. Drop on the top. Oh, no drop on the top. Just drop on the bottom. Flies in. Forcer goes a little bit too early. Reaver unloads. Reaver shoots on those Marines. Storms on them as well, but Reaver gets taken down there by the bunker. Pretty good bunker, if you ask me. Pretty good bunker. This is why you get a bunker. It just keeps those Marines alive against the Reaver and against Templar Storms. Bunkers are your best friend against the Reavers and High Templars. Just, they cannot do shit against it. It's really good to watch. No oh, more Starbucks coming up. Four armories in a row. Uh, five factories. He's progressing nicely. Supply in 157. He's going to build cannons. Ooh, so this is why he got the observers. He's going to limit the vision on the sides for Gensei with those cannons. But Gensei, of course, lifts up some engineering base, sees the cannons, puts his own tanks behind the wall, and that will kill this quite easily. Though they're kind of tripping out at the moment. Same on the bottom. Gonna siege them up. Couple cannons. Drop on the bottom. Ready to go in. This time around he got two cores here because the previous drop he had one cores here. And that didn't do too well. So this time around is gonna be two of them. Cannons getting taken down. Oh, cannons here on the top are killing the turrets. So he flies over the bottom. Again, he's distracted on the top side. He's distracted. Stims brings back to the bottom. The jump on the scene. Gonna storm how many? Not many. Kills mostly marines. A lot of storm kills more marines. Two storms happened. He's waiting for one or more storms. 63 energy. Drop on the top. Double drop. Ooh, he's gonna follow up the first drop with another one. While the fight is still happening, goes in. SVs fly. Okay, SVs make their escape yet again. On loads of high templar. Storms on the tank. Storms on nothing. Kills a couple more marines. So that's overall a pretty well played drop. But Gensei just defended it without making a mistake. Did not take any risks. Pulled the SVs to safety, pulled back the Marines, let everything do their job. Did not take a risk. Did not take a risk. Fleet Beacon, Tribunal, Stargates, and a Cyber Core number 2. We have currently level 1 armor for air, ground has level 101. We have every single upgrade there on the way for ground except armor. Carry capacity. He's only on like seven, eight gateways. There's not a lot of gateways. Also notice he has a lot of supply still hanging inside of Gensei's base. He might use that to get his own units in. Although now we see that Gensei is going to clear it out. He's got level 1-1 one, one on the tanks level 01 on the marines. He's no longer getting marine upgrades because there's no engineering base there on the low ground. Sometimes I like seeing players get level 2 attack or level 1 armor. Bone loads on the high ground as well. This is a... Is this a good drop? Nope. He gets taken down quite easily. Take it down quite easily. I mean to kill some stuff, but nothing that matters too much. And I think this is going to be a sign for Gensei to 
maybe go for the attack. Although he's gonna... Is he gonna go? He scans the map. Sees the sides, sees nothing there. So nothing to be worried about. A lot of dropships. With tanks inside. There is a pretty good drop spot right here in the bottom to kill some pros. The top side is well protected. The bottom side, not so much. I think he's gonna go for the bottom side and just end the game after defending himself really well. Mong just couldn't get a foot on the ground. Now Gensei is like, it's time to end this, my friend. It's now or never. Goes on the bottom side, and there's really not much at the bottom. He's gonna put some units on the high ground. We see a drop there from Mong going for a counter drop. He's gonna fly in closer. He sees there's almost nothing on the bottom. We're all putting the safety. A little bit too slow though. Kills about 12. Next is under attack. Kills even more probes. It's 18, 9, 2. It's looking good there for. Oh, drop on top of this economy. And so he's ran to safety there though. It's two drops happening at the same time. Probes ran back to the minerals too early. And oh, he just calls GG. He went back too early. Like, one of the... Oh, yeah, this one. 38 kills. Mm, Mong no longer had an economy. And he didn't kill enough of Gensei's economy to stay in the game, really. Like, he just knows, like, okay, I, I messed up. I messed up. He, 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 like, he got close. He was finally getting some results. Not the results he wanted. He had a Reaver, a High Templar, on the scene. The Reaver didn't kill too much. Like, all the SV's still alive on the top. And this drop, like he just did not protect his bottom side. He just got killed so easily. Mong was just a little bit too slow, or maybe, maybe Gensu was a little bit too fast with his five command centers. He started with three of them. His economy got big really quickly. He didn't even finish his base. He was just like, you know what? I scanned your base. I saw a weakness. I'm going to exploit it and end the game within a matter of seconds. That's something that happens at this level. You see a weakness. You exploit the weakness, and you just end it within the blink of an eye. It's over. It's just over. Why push? Like, give me just rewind a little bit. Why would you push through the middle of the map, go through a lot of pain and effort to move across the map, then fight through a choke, give your opponent time to produce against you as well? Why would you do that? You can just build some dropships and fly across the map and kill some stuff. Why? Why would you go for the hard option when there's an easy option like this? Just fly across the map. Easily daisily. Nothing there to slow you down. Nothing to stop you. You just arrive on the scene. Because of my temples in the front, they're not doing anything. You just sit up on the high ground. And then you realize, wait a second, there's nothing there on the low ground. There's literally nothing here. He kills the two, the two cannons, flies in, a lot of other stuff, and starts killing those probes. And the cool thing here is like Mong was trying to pull his, S his probes to safety and drop at the same time. Now doing both at the same time does mean that you're sacrificing something and he sacrificed some probes. And at the same time, drop comes in onto Gensei, who is dropping Mong, but the damage to Mong has already been done which gives him the opportunity to losslessly, kind of losslessly, pull most of his SVs to safety. He does lose a couple of them, a lot of them. He's got 70. And this side gets taken down with another 63. And a couple more SVs do die to some zealots. So it goes down to about 60. But really, this is nothing for Gensu to be worried about. And right there, you have the money shot on this tank. So that's what happened at the end. Double drop. Gensei comes out on top. I hope you enjoyed this short series, about 44 minutes, maybe not that short. It was three games, none of the games were very long, but it just goes to highlight that when players are this good at defending, your attacks are really difficult to get anything done with. It's so extremely difficult to get into a base that is protected as well as these players protect their bases. Thank you for watching. RGB is signing out.